Good afternoon and welcome to the fourth quarter CIC Partner Call. My name is Marianne Eccles. I'm the Channel Team Program Administrator and I will be your moderator for today's call. All of our attendees today will be in listen-only mode. Please use the questions feature to ask any questions. We will try to address them as we go. On the call today, we have Jenny Wilson, Katie Kiger, John Natashan, Tate Davis, Kimberly Daniel, and Tisa Weirman. Now I'd like to jump right in and introduce our first speaker, John Natashan, with our marketing acquisition update. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to get right into it. For acquisition for the BOL portfolio, we're, we've actually, I think, um, this whole year, we've been breaking all of our campaigns out into basically two key components. We've got portfolio activities as well as um, specific product emails for Time Matters and PC Law. Our portfolio activities for fourth quarter include both, I'm sorry, all of PC Law, Time Matters, Jurist, and Firm Manager. Um, it's a law firm profitability themed campaign which began the first week in October and will run, we have components of it running through the end of the year. Our Q4 tactics include bi-weekly emails, which is a change. We've cut back from sending out weekly emails for each part of the campaign to bi-weekly emails for the content nurture and bi-weekly product emails. <coughs> Excuse me. The first email went out the first week in October and it included an infographic on the top five law firm challenges. This week we will be doing our second email which we will introduce a lookbook um, for prospects to view. Um, we're going to add assets into the lookbook as we go. So the, this week we're, we're going to include the infographic that we've sent out. Um, we've chunked up a five years of law firm profitability white paper, so they'll get the first chunk of that this week as well, as well as a contact us page from our website um, where they can kind of go in and fill out which product they're interested in and, you know, are they interested in a demo, are they interested in more information, are they interested in a trial. Um, and then the rest of the emails are laid out there. Um, the first week in November, we're going to be adding additional chunks to the white paper. We also have a webinar that will be going out. Um, well, the webinar is actually the middle of November, so our webinar invites will be going out in the workbook um, with that third and fourth emails. The webinar date is there. It's going to be on a theme of law firm profitability on November 16th. I believe it's 2 to 3 in the afternoon, Eastern time. And then the fifth email will have the webinar materials added into the lookbook. And our final email will be a campaign wrap-up and driving to our 20% off promotion. They should be bottom of the funnel by that point, so um, the content nurture campaign will introduce the 20% off for Time Matters, PC Law, and for Manager. Uh, for product-specific um, campaigns, for PC Law for the entire fourth quarter, we we're running a 20% off promotion on new software purchases that's running from October 1st through the end of the year. Our tactics where we're um, promoting that are basically our bi-weekly product emails which started last week. We've got website ads on both our main um, BOL webpage. There's a carousel at the top of that page that rotates products. The PC Long Time Matters um, ads offer the 20% off as well as the specific product um, page on the website. Those started the week of 10-3 and then um, digital advertising started on October 1st. That was a Saturday. So we've got digital ads going out throughout the entire fourth quarter with the 20% off promo. Our product emails, again, we're driving to a bi-weekly cadence. For PC Law, we're doing an A-B test. Um, we are, we're splitting the list Half of them will be driving to our traditional schedule a demo email where they, the customer actually has to fill out a form and work with Jason and team to get the demo scheduled. Our B part of the test is actually we are doing a live product demo at the end of the month. Um, so the second half is actually driving those customers to register for the live demo. 
Um, we are also testing a little more text-heavy emails this month versus the bolded approach that we've used last quarter. Because the call to action on these product emails is driving them to sign up for a product demo, we're trying to give the, the prospects more information on the product rather than just a few bullets. Um, and then our tactics for the product emails are emails with follow-up calling motion. And for time matters, very similar, except we're not doing the A-B test. Our goal with the A-B test and PC law is to see how it works. If we have success with the live product demos, we're probably going to roll that out across those products for the rest of the quarter. Um, time matters, again, similar approach. So one thing that we will start mentioning with our October 26th send is the Time Matters 16 release will be available. Um, I'll be working with Dave on getting some messaging included in the product email, starting with the 26th and going forward. That's it, Okay, So John, we got a, we got a question for you. So uh, Pat is asking us, uh, how does how do the consultants get copies of the emails that are uh, that are going out? Um, so the best way you can send them to you or Tisa. I mean, Michelle, what is Michelle doing? Is she working with, does Michelle have copies, I think? Um, I think we could start with Tisa, and then okay. if that's something that needs to be um, blasted through the portal, we can send things out that way as well. <laughs> okay. Well, Tisa, I will send them to you. Okay. Got it. So we're basically, so, the, uh, so Pat, so it's a good question. Uh, We'll come up with a uh, kind of a little bit more efficient way to get the uh, uh, get the campaigns and the, the messages out to uh, out to the consulting group. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Thank yeah, I would, this is Jenny. I would just say as long as you are registered on the portal and you are um, authorized to receive communications, meaning you didn't opt out, we can distribute them that way, just the same way you got the invite to this call and how you get all of our other communications. Great, thank you. And um, now we will move on to Katie Tiger for our marketing retention update. All right. Um, so I'm going to start off with our VLO portfolio activities. These actually will mimic what John is putting in market for acquisition for our inactive customers. So customers that are no longer on an active maintenance plan will receive a message similar to the acquisition messaging, uh, focused on profitability, um, slightly change to uh, emphasize reinstatement. So some of the items that will be going out via email for that include an infographic white paper and a webinar. Uh, we also have inactive customer digital advertising in market, so um, driving you know, customers via our kind of digital channels and social media to um, get in contact with us and reinstate their plans. For um, our next update is TC Law specifically. Um, we have a new renewal nurture program that um, really is communications that uh, drives the value of the annual maintenance plan to specific phases of the renewal cycle. So based on the customer's renewal date, they'll be getting um, specific messages that will help walk them through, you know, best using their software, best using the resources um, that LexisNexis provides, including support uh, and upgrades, um, as well as Feature Fridays and other, you know, kind of goodies and training resources that we provide. So um, they'll get kind of a curated message once a month um, through Q4 and hopefully, you know, moving forward um, through next year to really hit them um, during the right time. And that will be via email and follow-up calling. We'll have follow-up calling for anyone in the month of their renewal um, to renew their maintenance plan. We also have the 15.4 release for PC Law. Um, customers of 15.x, so 1, 2, or 3, will receive um, communications noting kind of the impact of year end um, that the 15.4 release will have for them. So this will really help streamline that process and um, really help make things easier for them um, to upgrade. So that will be going out um, in early November, and we'll have email and follow-up calling to those specific customers. 
For PC Law, we also have a year-end content campaign um, communicating kind of year-end closed best practices and a variety of resources um, from some checklists that we have um, to, you know, white paper content as well as different trainings available to those customers. Those will um, be monthly emails throughout Q4. And uh, we also have coming soon for PC Law Feature Fridays um, that will be launching in November. We don't have that secured yet, um, but are hoping to finalize in the next week or so. Um, and then ongoing digital advertising that will be launch launching shortly to um, target customers within their renewal period. For Time Matters, it's very similar. That renewal mo motion will remain the same. Uh, then the, um, so that'll be targeting customers based on their specific phase in the renewal cycle once again. We'll have that same email motion and follow-up calling to customers that are in their renewal period. We'll also have a Time Matters 16 release. Our communications, I put November, but it's kind of a late October time frame. Uh, those will go to active and inactive customers and uh, via email. And then we also have uh, November Feature Fridays, which I just got some confirmation on from Richard Marks, who will be presenting uh, a kind of stump the consultant style uh, Feature Friday, really open um, Q&A kind of session. So I think that's going to be really fun. We have some ongoing digital advertising as well. Um, and that's it for Time Matters. So if anybody has um, an interest in hosting Feature Friday, uh, specifically the PC Law Feature Friday in November, feel free to contact Tisa and she can help get you all set up. Great. Thank you, Katie. Great. So we will move forward with our product updates from Kate. All right, guys. Let's talk a little product. So uh, can you get the next slide for me? All right, so we're going to start with uh, with Time Matters. So basically, uh, we'll touch on uh, what's happening with Time Matters 16. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, the install base and the cumulative effect of uh, some of our past releases, and then share uh, uh, some new things we're doing on the uh, on the Answer Center for Time Matters. So let's jump right into 16. Um, so basically, uh, Time Matter 16 is scheduled to release uh, next week, the week of October 24th. Uh, the core problem areas that we're looking to address for users uh, basically is to reduce the impact on the firm around upgrades. Uh, this has been a, a pretty consistent uh, theme here over the last several uh, uh, releases and, and maintenance releases, lots of impact from the uh, from the product boards and, and, and many of you guys here on the call. Um, we are bringing back some of the lost functionality uh, of the uh, of the calendar from uh, before Time Matters 14. Uh, that's been a, uh, a pretty big theme for a, uh, a very vocal, uh, a larger than expected, very vocal uh, group within the Time Matters install base. Uh, we're knocking out uh, some very high impact uh, customer defects and then uh, again addressing the, the technology stack. So um, basically within the calendar, uh, I'll touch on this here in a second, uh, we've added uh, an Active Directory integration. We've had some, uh, some larger firms are looking to, uh, they've asked to have uh, a very simple kind of an Active Directory 101, uh, basically the ability um, uh, to have this profile set up and tied in with Time Matters. Our, our assumption there is that's something that we're going to advise uh, a customer that, that wants to use that functionality is to work with a Time Matters consultant to, uh, to address that. And we'll make sure we stay, uh, we stay consistent there. So, uh, the starting points for some AD integration, again, for, uh, for those larger law firms. On Microsoft OneDrive, uh, this is one, if you guys remember, we added, uh, we introduced in a previous release, we had some great feedback from, uh, from a number of consultants on the uh, kind of that last yard of, uh, we're on kind of the one yard line on basic functionality. Uh, we made a, a couple of modifications. And uh, we see that something is a is a good place for uh, uh, for some doc management aspects. So we're pleased to uh, kind of take that feature we launched in a previous release and uh, took it uh, over the goal line. Uh, there's some pieces, as we all know, Microsoft has launched 
uh, SQL Server 216, and then uh, Windows Server 2016. So within the release, SQL Server 216 is there. Um, we have to do just some final quick testing on Windows Server 2016. There's really nothing in the product per se. We just have to do some testing, so that will be done here uh, very, very shortly. And then again, the uh, uh, the 11 defects in billing and contacts, email, et cetera, that we've uh, that we've knocked out. So we go to the next. Slide. Oh, and oh, before I forget, um, one of the pieces that uh, a number of you guys had asked me about was to make sure that uh, we would have a uh, basically refresh or update with Sage with uh, with time slips. Um, both the Sage team and Lexus work very, very closely together here over the last, uh, going on three or four months on this uh, particular aspect. Uh, there's a, uh, with Time Matters, or I'm sorry, with Time Slips Premium in, in 2017, uh, with their new SQL database, there's a new set of APIs. Both, again, both Lexus and Sage work very, very closely together. We just could not get it over the goal line together, uh, both the Sage team and the Lexus team. Uh, we'll, we'll be picking this up at a uh, at Time Matters 16.1, which we're planning for in, uh, in Q1. Uh, I'm very disappointed uh, that we weren't able to get this in, but again, both teams were very, very close. There were just a couple of bugs that neither team could get resolved. and. Uh, uh, so that functionality will be coming here in, uh, in Q1. So uh, let me touch base uh, just some real quick screenshots on the calendar. Um, sure, when you guys go off and download 16, you'll see all this. But, uh, but basically, uh, we've added back in uh, some of the old classic calendar look and feel where uh, we're able to uh, meetings that are scheduled at the same time, they can stack up on top of each other in a vertical fashion. Uh, users, attorneys, et cetera, can, can see the entire header and description um, of, the, uh, uh, of the appointment. Um, what we found, I should get the next slide for me too. Uh, the other piece that we've done here is uh, we've added in some functionality into both the monthly and the weekly calendar um, where there's a very simple fly out you can click on the particular date and you'll be able to see the entire events being able to scroll up and down. Um, the reasons why we did this, uh, we have a, a pretty, uh, you know, it's a pretty significant percentage of the base is on older versions of Time Matters on either uh, 13 or, or 12. One of the reasons was because uh, firms just weren't ready to give up the calendar functionality. So until we could get these two key pieces back in, um, we, we view it as a, as a vehicle to get folks ready to, uh, to upgrade, coupled with uh, uh, the different pieces that have been introduced in the Time Matters here over the last several releases. So this doesn't really, uh, you know, the, the problem we're trying to solve for here is the, the interviews that we've done, the, the dialogues we've had, uh, with many of the folks here on this call, these are some of the key calendar problems that we needed to get in and address in order to uh, uh, to address kind of that 80-20 functionality from the uh, from the old kind of the classic calendar, uh, for want of a better word. So uh, very pleased to get this uh, back into the product. The next slide for me. Um, I'm not going to read all of these, but it's in the deck. Uh, this is uh, this will be available on the support center and also in the release notes. But these are the uh, the defects and the web stars that have been addressed with uh, with Time Matters 16. Uh, so just when you get a copy of the deck and you get the release notes again, this will kind of standard operating procedure. Uh, these notes will be in there. And then uh, I did want to spend a, a couple of minutes. Can next slide for me um, on what I would call the, the cumulative effect of past releases in the sense that um, when you look at the different releases here over the last five years from Time Matters 12 all the way up to 16, um, there's a lot of things that we've been able to do, uh, some features, defects, enhancements, et cetera, that we've been able to do in the product. So um, back to the, uh, the use case that I mentioned where uh, we do have uh, significant 
uh, percentage of the base that are on these older versions. Let's take an example, a, a firm that's on Time Matters 13 today. Uh, is that with the in-place upgrade, as you know, what we, what we put in product here a couple of years ago, when they upgrade from Time Matters 13 into Time Matters 16, not only are they getting, you know, Windows 10 support and Office 216 and, and the latest versions of SQL Server, because you, you almost can't even buy a PC nowadays without Win 10, and it's uh, challenging to get versions of Office beyond uh, Office 2016 and, and 365. Um, is you get, you know, there's a hundred defects that have been addressed. There's a, a lot of the new features that have been in the product here over the last couple of releases. So it's a pretty rich uh, experience. Again, what we've been solving for on trying to make upgrades easier and less problematic, they're not perfect, but uh, feedback we've had from the community, feedback we've had from our support teams is that the upgrade experience is getting better. Um, so, you know, just wanted to make sure that we called out that there's a tremendous amount of value now that we've addressed the calendar challenge, uh, a couple of other pieces, that's, uh, it's, a, it's a much better experience now for, for customers to go ahead and upgrade either to 16 or, um, as we know, the, uh, you all, uh, one of the messages that's pretty consistently delivered is wait for the dot release, which will be, uh, you know, the, into, uh, into 17, but it's a good time, a lot of value here for folks to look to start upgrading. Next slide for me. Um, so for, uh, uh, wanted to spend a couple of minutes on the Time Matters Answer Center. Uh, so this is basically the, uh, the objective we're trying to solve for here is that uh, when we look at our at customer interviews that we do, our surveys, our MPS, um, users are asking for just an, an easier, more powerful uh, help tool. Uh, so what we've done is with the new, uh, with the answer center, uh, this is a replacement for the end product help. Um, they're basically trying to modernize the structure, uh, uh, much, you know, a much more intuitive way, uh, a better look and feel uh, that users can use uh, and it, plus it links back to the, uh, the Time Matters Support Center for, uh, you know, for more uh, system support kind of related questions. Uh, the links here are down at the bottom. Uh, we've introduced it with Time Matters 16, and we'll also do the same thing uh, for the PC Law Answer Center out in 2017. So again, the goal is how do we make it easier for the user uh, to find, uh, either find new functionality uh, answer very common questions, and ha instead of having to call support, instead of having to uh, to, to call consultants for quick five-minute phone calls, which you guys don't necessarily get to bill for sometimes, is is making this easier uh, for the user, giving them a better experience. Uh, the next slide has a has another example. Uh, it's a new article, or this is kind of the new structure at an article level. Uh, search terms. Step-by-step uh, -step instructions, you know, different topics. Again, with that goal of making it a, a little more powerful, uh, easier experience uh, for the user. So, before I leave Time Matters, uh, I'm sure there's are, there's a bunch of questions here from the group. I'll try to address these on the fly. So, hold on. All right, so uh, okay, so question one, uh, Kelly Plunkett's asking a question. I have a Time Matters upgrade scheduled for November 1st. Are there any options for customers to choose between 15 or 16? So, um, you know, if you're, if you're deploying on the 1st, uh, you know, the customer can choose between uh, kind of 15.1, the latest version, or they can go to 16. Um, Kelly, I mean, you guys will be getting your uh, your entitlement emails on the day of release. Um, my assumption for release is actually going to be the earlier part of next week. Uh, so you'll be able to, uh, you can do a quick eval on it, or if they want to go out the door with 15.1, and then upgrade later. It's uh, either either path is uh, is palatable. 
but you'll have an opportunity to, to, to get your entitlement email here pretty quick and, and be able to, uh, to play around with it. Uh, let's see, Tom Caffrey asked a question on, do any of the new Time Adder 16 features require an active AMP? Uh, yeah, basically to upgrade to Time Matter 16, a customer would need to have uh, an active AMP, an active maintenance plan in order, uh, in order to gain, uh, in order to gain access to be able to download. Um, will Time Matter 16 support QuickBooks 2017? Um, so that's not currently uh, in scope. Uh, that's from uh, uh, from Karen Schwartz. Uh, Karen, we didn't include that in the 16 release, uh, but it's something that we're looking to target here very quickly uh, with, uh, with the kind of a maintenance release to Time Matters. So we're uh, working with our friends at Intuit. Um, Wells is happy about the calendar. That's good. Always happy to, uh, to see Wells excited. And... Uh, Wells had another question about some calendar support. It's a good question. Let me, uh, we'll follow back up on that one. And let's see. Um, uh, Bogman Neal is asking a question about any beta testing of, uh, of version 16 by, uh, by consultants. Um, so for this year, uh, you know, for Time Matters 16, uh, with some of the pieces that are in uh, in motion, um, we we chose not to do beta testing. Um, some of the things that are in planning mode right now for next year for uh, for 2017, uh, if things go the way I expect them to, uh, yeah, we're going to want a handful of, uh, of folks for the releases in scope for uh, for 17 because there's some pretty good stuff we're looking at doing. Um, so good question there. Uh, let's see. Um, when will the answer center be available? Uh, the link that is up on the screen. So when you guys get the uh, when you guys get the slides, uh, it will be active either now or will be uh, active on uh, release date. I'm not sure which, but it will be coming soon. And. Uh, uh, Tom Caffrey had a follow-on question of: Do any of the new features go away? if the AMP is not active. So, uh, Tom, to answer that question for you, if a customer has an active AMP and they upgrade to, they'll have the, uh, they'll be, uh, they have the rights to upgrade to 16, uh, but features in the product will not uh, disappear or they won't have access to anymore if they happen to let their, uh, their AMP expire. So, uh, uh, so good questions. And, uh, Thanks. Uh, Arita, I'll have your answer here in a second. And any provisions for installing Time Matters 16 without replacing Time Matters 15? Um, from Michael. So, hmm. so I think the way we would need to do that, and Michael, I will follow. This is actually probably a, a, a bigger question for the consulting community is, do you need a second entitlement to have both Time Matters 15, kind of a not for kind of a free quick, quick Kim, you have a? So is that the question, or is it that they don't want it to be in place upgraded because they want to run them side by side? Hmm. Okay. So on that one, Michael, we'll, uh, we'll follow up in the, uh, in the FAQ for you on that one. We'll give you an answer to, uh, to both of those. Uh, Kathy Berger asked a question, is there a list of fixes for billing and account link areas on the website? Uh, yes, yeah, so the product defects um, in, the, uh, in the support center, uh, that will have all of the elements that have been addressed. And Judy Best asked the question of, will the answer center be free to anyone, even those not under an AMP? Um, you know what? I am actually not sure of the answer to that question. So, if I can figure that out here before we exit, if not, we'll uh, we'll put that into the uh, into the FAQs. Oh, some good ones. Lots of good questions there, and I'm sure some more have come up. All right, so let's hit 
Let's hit PC Law. Since I'm sure there's many, many folks anxious what's happening in the world of PC Law. Um, so we're basically going to cover uh, you know, what's new with 15.4, uh, what's the status of it. And I did want to spend a couple of minutes on uh, what's next for PC Law going into, uh, going into 17. So PC Law 15.4, our target release is, uh, is Halloween, that does, uh, or the week of Halloween. That does not mean uh, this is going to be a pumpkin. Uh, it's a uh, you know, week of October 31st. Uh, as we get closer to that date, we'll make sure we get that out to folks. Um, you know, it's a maintenance release uh, as part of our uh, SQL technology refresh. Um, a uh, pretty broad number of customers around the world, U.S. and Canada and the Caribbean and Pacific, are, uh, have upgraded to 15x, um, either you know, 15, 1, 2, and 3. Um, yeah, I've, I've talked to a, uh, a number of you guys offline, and I, I appreciate the emails. I appreciate the phone calls. Um, what we're seeing that uh, uh, customers that we're having challenges with around upgrading really comes down to three key areas. Um, there's environmental areas where uh, the firm is not ready to, uh, you know, their, their internal environment is not ready to, uh, to move to SQL off of C-Tree. Uh, I've had some great input from, another of you guys, uh, from many of you guys on those sorts of scenarios. Um, Another area is around data corruption when they actually migrate from C-Tree to SQL. Uh, C-Tree is much, much more forgiving of, uh, of incomplete records and uh, kind of, quote, bad data that can uh, be developed over years and years and years. Um, things can slip through in the C-Tree to SQL migration, and then uh, those issues raise their ugly head soon after. And then uh, basically just, uh, uh, you know, there's some... Uh, there's defects that have been reported here over the last uh, releases that are associated with the tech refresh. PC Law, as we know, is a, it's a very complex product that touches pretty much every uh, element, uh, every workflow within the work within the uh, the firm. And uh, you know, we've uh, we've uncovered things with each release and have uh, very quickly turned those around. Uh, the reason why I'm calling out these three kind of uh, uh, areas that when a customer has problems, that these are the things coming up, is that uh, we're working on some, some, uh, some potential solutions to make this easier and try to identify it ahead of time uh, to reduce the pain level uh, for customers when they look to upgrade. Uh, I don't have a, a written down plan 100% uh, on this. Uh, it's something we are investigating. As soon as I have some uh, some better details, some better line of sight on this, um, I'll either uh, we'll send out a communication to either uh, you know via uh, uh, via the partner portal, or uh, depending upon the level of detail we get to, we may even do just a, a one-off call just for that. Uh, but just be patient with us. Uh, we are trying to uh, to figure out ways to make this even less painful for customers. Uh, as they upgrade, because um, at the end of the day, uh, as we look forward to PC Law 16 and some of the enhancements we're looking to do next year, uh, firms will need to uh, will need to upgrade. Will need to move from C to SQL. Uh, it's a better experience for the firm once they're upgraded and once they're moving uh, smoothly. Much more stable platform. Um, but that's that's something that firms, uh, you know, that solo attorney with a single license, all the way up to firms with uh, 50 plus licenses. Uh, and again, we're we're looking at at again trying to make that easier. We're not the first software company that's gone through this sort of a refresh before, um, and it's one where uh, again we're trying to deliver the best experience that we can. So, moving forward into what 15.4 looks like. Uh, there's 40, we, we've addressed 44 customer reported defects across a, uh, a vast range of, uh, of areas here. I have an eye chart here in a second that will, uh, that will touch on those. Uh, uh, but the call to action is that, um, as, as Katie uh, Kiger mentioned in the marketing update a little bit earlier, um, we will be sending out a very targeted uh, communication to those firms 
uh, that are on a version of 15. Uh, highly encouraging those firms to, uh, to upgrade to 15.4 based on the, the defects that we've addressed. Uh, number two is that uh, support uh, will be calling and contacting each firm that has a web store uh, that's impacted by the release, again, encouraging it. And uh, you know, my ask for each uh, PC Law Consultant is, uh, is download 15.4, uh, take a look at it. Uh, we have, based on the traffic that we've seen here over the last 30 days of new issues that are being reported, uh, you know, issues have pretty much have slowed down to a uh, to a trickle uh, around product defects. Um, a number of you have uh, have taken the opportunity, uh, have been communicating with us around uh, around things that you found. Uh, highly, highly appreciate that. That means a, a great deal to us. And um, if we could have uh, you know a broader range of the consultants. Uh, Download 15.4. Take a look at it. If there's things that you see. Please, please, please get those to uh, get those to Kim Daniel and I. Uh, so that's that's 15.4. Again, the week of October 31st. A lot of things that we're fixing and addressing. Can you go to the next slide for me? Uh, this is the eye chart. Uh, you'll <laughs> you'll get this in soft copy, so uh, don't feel like you have to to squint and uh, figure these things out. But again, WebStar and description. These will all be available in the release notes, and these will also be on the, uh, the PC Law Support page. Um, I did want to touch on uh, what's going on with 15.3. So um, what we found out here, uh, uh, you know, here in the, uh, the not-so-distant past, is we found a, uh, uh, a defect that was introduced at 15.3 that's impacting bank reconciliations. Here are the, the open web stars are here on the screen. Um, the good news is it's not impacting a vast majority, it's not impacting uh, 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 dozens and dozens of customers, uh, only, uh, uh, you know, not, it's not a, not a large number that's, uh, that's been impacted. Um, we have a fix. Uh, it's been addressed at 15.4 here in the next couple weeks. Uh, support has a DLL, a DLL that they can drop in. Uh, we are actively working with customers uh, to drop it into 15.3, um, plus uh, addressing some of the downstream impact of the bug. On average, that call may take 30 minutes with support. At times, it's taking two plus hours. But we're actively working with the firms uh, and the support. 2L is, again, going in and uh, making corrections. Um, and then, uh, so customers that have experienced the issue, uh, we very quickly, or, or in fact, the calls are going on this week, and uh, which again is one of the reasons why that when 15.4 comes out, that we want to make sure we uh, we work with these customers uh, and get them upgraded. Folks that are on 15.1 and 15.2 will not experience this issue. Uh, it's only introduced at 15.3, and again, we'll. Uh, uh, that bug has been fixed. It was the very first thing, or one of the first things we addressed uh, for the for the 15.4 release. Okay, so that's uh, that's PC Law 15.4. I did want to spend a couple of minutes and let's talk about what's coming up. Uh, what's next for PC Law? So we're um, planning's in progress for for PC Law 16. We have a very tentative date of uh, of Q1. Uh, that may pull in, that may push out, but for planning purposes, it's a Q1 release. Uh, what's in scope right now is uh, any uh, anything that comes up uh, uh, from 15, from PC Law 15, we'll be able to, to insert into that release. Uh, there is a long-standing backlog of defects that were uh, uh, that were identified in previous versions, kind of pre pre-tech refresh, we'll be able to address those too. Uh, there's some usability improvements. A, a lot of the feedback that you all have been giving me for uh, well over a year now on just little things that we can do to make uh, uh, to make the user experience better, or uh, user experience better. Um, there's, uh, you know, if we, uh, we call her uh, to use uh, uh, 
a persona name that a couple of you guys use, uh, we'll be able to make Shirley happy. Uh, Shirley, our back office administrator, we can make her happy with some of these usability improvements that we're pretty excited about. And then finally, some enhancements. Um, the, uh, our first thought is to uh, be able to knock out some, uh, improve the, uh, the reporting experience, also make sure we work on the billing workflow. Uh, but there's additional enhancements that we're, uh, we're planning throughout 17. Uh, so our, our product board, we're looking to get that guy back into motion again. Uh, we can finally start talking about new. So we'll be able to touch on uh, prioritizing the enhancements. Uh, feedback that you guys are seeing from the marketplace, and again, defect prioritization. Uh, folks that have asked to be on the board, uh, you should already have received from some emails from me, um, some communications here probably the last uh, couple of weeks. If you're interested in joining the board or you haven't uh, received any, any update from me on this, uh, just drop me a note, more than happy to, uh, to get you added. Okay, so that is the board. Um, uh, what's new with support? Uh, we'll have some more detail to share this uh, next quarter, but um, so customer support for Lexus, we've invested in a new, uh, a new tool um, around knowledge and case management. So the, the outcome that we're expecting here is uh, we'll be able to have a much cleaner end-to-end -end view of the uh, of the customer's experience, um, some things like uh, a lot of things that we've talked about in the past that we're now able to do is there's a uh, there's a new more powerful uh, customer portal uh, for self help uh, that's scheduled to uh, to roll out this quarter into Q1. Uh, chat functionality is finally coming again. This is something many of you guys have been asking about for a long time, uh, but real chat. Um, coming in 17, the earlier part of 17. As soon as I have a more definitive date on that, we'll make sure we get that out to you guys. And then uh, with this new tool, with this new platform, as there's new features that are coming out to improve that support experience, we'll make sure you guys know. So at the end of the day, what does this mean for PC Law and what does this mean for Time Matters customers? Is that it's a, uh, uh, the goal is to have a, a much more powerful, much simpler to use platform for self-help. Um, again, being able to, uh, customers can help themselves and they'll still be able to work uh, with our support agents and our, uh, and our engineers and 2L. So that's what's new with support. Um, uh, I did, uh, uh, Rita had a question earlier about what are the, uh, uh, what are some of the wish lists, uh, wish list uh, emails. Um, so for, for PC Law, it's the same one that we've used in the past up here in the top. And then uh, we've added a, uh, a Time Matters suggestions. So both of these emails uh, go directly to, uh, to my inbox and to Kim Daniels, or I'm sorry, Kim Daniel, always do the S, uh, to Kim's inbox. We read every single one of those. I know Jane Sheringhausen sends me these uh, every couple of weeks. Uh, so we do listen, we do reply. And uh, again, if, if you guys have customers that want to send us input or if you guys want to send us input, uh, keep them coming. So uh, I'm about to get the hook. Let me do a quick search on PC Law 15 questions. And if I'm not able to get to it, uh, I will make sure that we uh, follow up with it offline. And let's see. So we had a question, are you still recommending that firms not upgrade from 14 C tree to, uh, to 15 SQL? Um, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, we, if a customer is looking to upgrade and they want the benefits of SQL, uh, we're not going to tell a, uh, we're not going to tell a customer no. Um, the, uh, uh, one of the things that we've done this year is instead of sending out thousands and thousands of entitlement keys uh, and just blasting those out to the market, uh, we're continuing down the path. This is something that, uh, this is the process that Canada has used for several years, where when a customer is looking to upgrade, uh, that they just drop us a note to, uh, uh, to the support team and then we, uh, or make a phone call 
and we're able to get a uh, entitlement key out to them within uh, within 24 hours. So we'll uh, we'll continue to uh, we'll continue to do that. Uh, Debbie Schaefer is asking me a fantastic question. Hopefully, I just address that. Are there any new features in uh, or enhancements in PC logs or just in maintenance mode? So uh, some of the things that are on tap for PC log 16 will be able. Uh, you know, that's when the enhancements are able to start up again. Um, once we get the, uh, the SQL refresh uh, in a uh, you know, in a pretty good place, what we're assuming with 15.4. So stay tuned on that one. Uh, Debbie, you've got a bunch of questions for me, so I think I need to give you a phone call to catch up. Uh, and I think I think those are. Those are most of them. All right, so let me hand it back over to, uh, to Marianne and Jenny. Thanks, Great. guys. Thank you, Tate. All right, I am going to move forward with a few updates um, on the some new features added to our partner portal in regards to deal registration. All right, if, when you log into the partner portal, if you go to the deal registration tab and click on manage my deal registration opportunities, you can now view a full list of all your registered deals. So this functionality now exists to see pending approved and closed deals. The pending section may have a deal highlighted as needs attention in the status column. Some of the reasons we may flag your deal needs attention is if the estimated dollar value needs to be completed, which this can be your best guess entered here. It can be a list price based on number of users that the deal that you're registering the deal for. And if you have any questions about the estimated dollar value, you can reach out to Tisa Wehrman. Um, another reason the deal may be marked needs attention is if the end user information is not correct. We've had a few deals registered recently in which the CIC is entering their information as the end user information. Um, so just note that if prior to approval, we will not be we will be marking deal the deals needs attention if there's anything that needs to be edited before the deal gets approved. And if you, for specific reasons, you'll see the comments column, and I will type out exactly what needs to be edited within the registration prior to approving it. All right, next um, section are going to be your approved deal registrations. Um, please be mindful in this area of your approaching expiration date. If the deal has closed, we ask that you click on the deal and mark the closed date and dollar value for that deal. If you see an upcoming expiration date and you would, are requesting that the deal be extended, please reach out to either Tisa Weirman or myself at partnerhelp at lexusnexus.com and we can extend the deal six months. Finally, a new section has been added for all of your closed deal registrations. This list will display all of your one, lost, or denied deals. So again, if there is a deal on this list that you are questioning, please feel free to reach out to either Tisa or myself at the partner help at LexisNexis.com inbox, and we are happy to help you all with your questions. All right, and I think that's it for deal registration updates. We just wanted to give you a quick snapshot of some changes on our partner portal. And next, I would like to introduce Jenny Wilson. Thank you, Marianne. Hey, everybody. Um, I was just going to go through a couple of partner-specific incentives that we're running through the end of the year and some housekeeping items. Um, I, earlier, you heard Katie and, uh, or John talk about the 20% off customer promo. Um, so in a, that's that's obviously the, the customer facing promo and then in addition to that we have a couple partner specific promotions um, one of them is an amicus takeaway promotion where you can earn higher commission for any net new time matters opportunity that you uh, bring to us via 
registering on the partner portal. So if you're um, influencing the deal, then you can make the additional um, commission that would bring your rate up to 40%. If you're reselling, you would earn the additional discount that would also equal the 40%. The so pretty, pretty attractive incentive there. Um, and then we're also going to offer an additional 10% on your commissions or reseller discount for any um, closed deal registration that you bring. So this could be any opportunity that has already been registered or anything that is registered and closes between now and the end of the year. Um, and this is based on your net new or your value add opportunity. So again, it has to be registered in the portal and closed before December 31st, uh, 2016. And then the last one, uh, we mentioned on the last call that Firm Manager was going to be coming to the channel. So Firm Manager is is here, and we haven't done a, a big, huge launch or anything, but we are gradually integrating it into our program, and we are going to offer an upfront of $250 commission per user for anybody signed up between now and the end of the year, and then the commission would reflect your um, the standard AMP through or the subscription um, commission through the life of the product. So pretty pretty attractive offers there. Um, for firm manager, there is a separate agreement there and some um, other authorizations that are needed. So if you're interested in taking advantage of that, please reach out to your partner manager, either Lisa or Stacy. Um, and the rules and eligibility, I think I went through that when I talked through them, but um, must be done before the end of the year. You may have to have an agreement. The deals have to be registered on the portal. Um, and you can't combine any partner promotion. So while you can combine them with a the customer promotion, that 20% that we mentioned earlier, these can be combined there, but you can't combine two par partners. So you couldn't do the amicus takeaway with the deal registration and combine those. Uh, can you forward the slide, Marianne? OK. And then just um, some housekeeping items that I just wanted to mention. Um, making sure that your agreements are up to date. If you've worked um, with us, either myself or, or Sister Marianne, in the last uh, 18 months on an agreement, then you guys are fine. If you are on a legacy agreement, you need to get those moved over. If you have any questions, just contact us at the Partner Help, and we can confirm if your agreements are good. Um, for any individual consultants out there, just make sure that you're registered to your company and not as an individual. Um, and then for you guys, uh, just confirm that all of your consultants are certified. We've got some upcoming trainings. I think that's on a slide here in a second that Marianne's going to be going on um, or going through. And then um, lastly, we'll send out a communication with one of the upcoming newsletters with the link for the certified partner annual fees that are will be coming due in January. So you can plan for that. Uh, Marianne, you want to go to the next one? I think it's training. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Yep. Sounds great. Um, I will just um, uh, highlight uh, there, oh, the upcoming trainings. There um, is one more for Time Matters um, beginning of November, so in just a couple weeks. Um, and then moving forward from there, um, looks like a 2017, spring 2017, or an excess of training. Um, and if you have any questions about um, signing up for these, please feel free to give us a, um, shoot us an email, either, again, at the Partner Help inbox, or um, reach out to Lisa or Stacy. All right, and so okay. that's... Um, Concludes everything. Um, if we have any outstanding questions, yeah. we want to answer. Yeah, we got a uh, couple of questions have come in. So, uh, so Jenny, this one's for you. Uh, Michael asked a question of uh, if I was certified and firm manager, um, is there, you know, how do they, how do the legacy firm manager certifications from uh, from a couple of years ago? Uh, what does that mean, or is there any impact or, or elements uh, for the firm manager program that you just mentioned? 
Okay, so today there's no certifications, but it's just based on your agreement authorization, which is where I, I said to, to reach out to the channel manager just to make sure we can get you the right agreement. Um, but as far as the certification, I'm not aware that anything would carry over because today there's not a requirement for certification. Um, I hope that answers the question. If not, just let us know. There was also one um, that kind of went into this that should, that somebody, a couple people had asked if um, the certification, uh, the certified partner showed online via a partner locator and now they are no longer on there with their certification. So yes, we have made changes to the partner locator um, and that is now all done internally, so if a customer needs a partner, they will go online and fill out a form. That form comes to our team, and our team then takes it by what the what product the customer is looking for and the location, and then we farm that out to an authorized partner. We did this so we could track those that are coming in and inquiring versus just giving a name and hoping the customer follows that. This, this way we can ensure that they are getting to a partner and we can track that through. Um, so Jenny, a couple of uh, good stuff, a couple of other questions, uh, and these are on the uh, uh, on the partner portal and the deal reg tool. So uh, uh, Carol asked a question, uh, if a customer purchased product, how do we mark as closed? Marianne, so, um, yeah, I will speak to that. Um, if you click on the um, approved deal on the deal registration, um, that there's a, that blue hyperlink. You can actually drill into the deal from there, and there is an option to select your close date. You can put your dollar value in, and when you update that, I receive a notification um, that the deal was updated within the partner help inbox. And I actually go in um, to the administrative view in the partner portal. I ensure that the deal is closed, and I mark it, and then it will appear on your closed deal registration list. Okay. And uh, yeah, Tom has a Tom Bush has a similar question. Uh, this is one we probably just want to uh, uh, kind of follow up with some instructions for the uh, for the guys. If that makes sense. Uh, Judy Beth, Judy asked a question on. Are there any uh, 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 are there any special data conversion rates during the Amicus takeaway period, and are all conversions expect or are all conversions expected to be handled uh, by the key uh, by the consultant community? Uh, Jenna, you want me to address that one, or, or do you want to address it? Sure, you can take it, Tate. Thank you. Sure. So, uh, so Judy and, and other folks. Um, we, uh, uh, on the Lexus side, uh, we can do some of the data conversion with the, uh, the data conversion team. Our actual preference um, is to actually have the, uh, have the consultants uh, do the data conversion. Uh, we think it's a better experience for the customer. Um, it's a, uh, ultimately, it's, it's a, uh, it, it gives you kind of more control of the opportunity as you uh, as you work uh, as you work with the law firm, especially with some of the uh, the challenges that uh, that Abacus is, is given to uh, to the Amica space with the uh, with their acquisition. Uh, so again, we the service is available, but our preference is to is to have the consulting community uh, you know take advantage of that and and again provide an even better service to the uh, Better service to the client. Uh, let's see. There's a couple of other uh, ones that I can address offline. A couple of questions around tutorial databases. I know we're a couple minutes early or a couple minutes late. Uh, I think we've. Uh, I think we've addressed. I think we've addressed them all. All right. Great, thank you yeah, so much. Um, Go ahead, Jen. I, sorry, I was just going to mention, we'll pull the list of questions and we'll regroup on it to make sure that we've covered everything. If there's anything that we missed, we will be sure to address it with you directly. And um, Marianne, you can just do the wrap up and let people know what to expect. Thank you. Sounds great, thank you. Um, 
So all attendees today um, and those who are not able to attend will all be receiving an email with a link of the recorded webinar from today as well as the slide deck. Um, and that includes, concludes our call. And thank you so much for attending. And everyone have a great afternoon.